Hello students, in this video I'm just going to give you a little bit more guidance about pinning, starting with a beetle that you see there that I collected in a malaise trap. I'm going to go ahead and dry off this beetle since it was in alcohol by giving it a quick rub down on some paper towel, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to pin it. Now because this is a beetle, you want to pin it in the right elytra, slightly right of the center line that divides the two elytra. Now, as always, you want to make sure that your insect is pinned at a 90 degree angle, which my first shot did not have. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and try to pin that again and get it more perpendicular. So once I do that, you go ahead and you push the insect up. This is easy enough to do with the three step block that came with your kits, but I don't have one of those. So I just push it up to about two thirds of the way up the pin with the remaining third above it. So now that it's pinned, I can go ahead and try to show you some features. But as you can see here, it's slightly too dark with my microscope. I'm using my digital microscope for this video. I'll probably go ahead and just take some photos with my macro camera a little bit later. But I'm showing you some of the standard features of the beetle. You have this heavily armored body with the elytra. Uh, those are the hardened forewings. And now I'm zooming in just to give you a couple of views of this cute little guy. This is a scarab belonging to the family Scarabeidae. And just as a reminder, beetles belong to the order Coleoptera. But you can go ahead and see some features there. Lots of spines on those legs. Now we'll move on to our next insect. Our next insect is a hemipterin. So you can see there in that image from Purdue Extension that you pin hemipterins slightly right of center through the scutellum. Now this is a little bit hard to see in this guy, but you can see that I'm trying to get it slightly right of center. Again, trying to reposition so that my pin is actually perpendicular to the, my insect. And then at this point, since I don't have a pinning block, I have to go get ahead and gently shove that up to about two thirds of the way up the pin. So this is a hemipterin, and we could see some of the hemipterin characteristic features if I move the legs out of the way, which I'm doing right now. One of the things I like about this is that it has these very, very sort of capable legs that make it good for sort of jumping and hopping away. Those are nice. You can see the nice venation of the four wings that are meant to, in some instances, mimic things like leaves and other plant matter as a form of camouflage. And what I'm trying to get here is a clear image of those tiny little hair-like antenna and also of the piercing sucking mouth parts. That's what actually defines this order that instead of chewing mouth parts, they have those piercing sucking mouth parts that I'm trying to get into focus and hopefully point out to you here. Our next insect is going to be one that belongs to the order Diptera, commonly known as the flies. So this is another fly that comes out of my malaise trap, so I'm going to go ahead and sort of try to get rid of that excess alcohol. It's a very bristly, stout-bodied fly, and hopefully I'm going to point out some features to you that are characteristic of the Diptera. Now, diptera means two wings, and that's referring to the fact that dipterans only have one pair of wings. So things like the coleoptera, the hemiptera, uh, the hymenoptera, they have two pairs of wings, but diptera only have one pair of wings. And this is going to be one of the first things, whoops, I lost a leg there. This is gonna be one of the first things that you see when you're trying to key out your adult insects to order. So I've gone ahead and I've pinned my insect slightly right of center in the thorax. It looks like I got the pin nicely perpendicular on that first shot. And what I'm moving out of the way here is that one wing that you see on the left side. You'll notice that there is sort of a fleshy mass beneath it. That's a calyptor. That's something that you see in the more derived flies. Now I'm going to show you another characteristic of all flies, and these are the halt tiers. So flies only have one pair of wings, but they also have one pair of sort of gyroscoping balancing apparatuses that are known as halt tiers. These allow the fly to balance in the air. It makes them very acrobatic. It allows them to sense air currents. 
And what I'm trying to do is point out those hull tiers to you here, and they sort of appear like those little white circles that are in between the wing and the body. I'll put some arrows so that you can see them, but I'm moving the wings out of the way so you can see those sort of very regular white circles. Another way that you could tell that this is a fly and not some other order of insect is by looking at the mouth parts. Unlike beetles and hymenoptera, which have mandibles, flies have sponging mouth parts. Uh, so they're not going to be cutting their food apart, they're going to be lapping and sponging. Some flies are going to have biting, sucking mouth parts like uh, mosquitoes, but they're not going to be the mandibles that you're used to seeing. And what you can see here on this fly that I'm moving around are clearly those sponging mouth parts. Our next insect is actually a Hymenoptera or a wasp bee or ant. This is specifically a wasp. And this wasp is on the small side. It is maybe half a centimeter long. So I won't be able to pin it, but instead I'm going to show you some point mounting. So every other video up until this point has been sped up around 300 times the actual speed. But for this point mounting segment, I'm going to slow it down or rather play it at the actual real time speed. So there's my point that you just saw go by. And now I'm going to bend that point down to give it a little bit of a shelf. And there is that shelf right there. I'm going to straighten out that shelf a little bit more just to give me a more shelfy appearance and I'm applying a little bit of glue to that shelf. And once I have that glue, I'm going to try to put it on the right side of the thorax. So I'm going to shift around my insect here to make that a little bit easier since this is quite small. Getting it to lie down with the right side up is always a little bit of a challenge, but you always point mount on the right side of the thorax, never on the left side. So now I'm gonna to try to press my glued tip against that right side of the thorax, just right there. So once you have the insect, since that glue is gonna take a couple of minutes to dry, you can do some amount of manipulation to get it more straight on that shelf or to move some features out of the way. But as you can see, it's sort of a tricky proposition here that you can only move it so much without accidentally knocking it off of its shelf. So here I'm trying to get it a little bit in focus for you to see that it is glued on the right side of the thorax. And that is the standard point mounting position whenever you are point mounting any of your small insects. So you put that away and you let it dry before you mess with it any further. Our next insect is going to be a rather large one. So going to the other end of the size spectrum, this is about an inch, maybe an inch and a half long. And this is a katydid which is going to be a member of the order Orthoptera. So a rather large insect with pretty clear segmentation, and you are going to pin Orthopterans in the slightly right of center of the pronotum. Now I'm just withdrawing the wings here to show you where the abdomen is. You don't wanna pin through the abdomen. You wanna go in that pronotal plate right there as I'm doing. And I'm straightening out my, well, it's definitely not a 90 degree perpendicular, so I'm straightening that out and getting that to the right angle to the insect. And I really like these insects because katydids, one of the things they do is that they have leaf camouflage. So their forewings, they do have two pairs of wings, but the forewings have all of these adaptations to make them look like leaves, including the veins that you would see. And it's the wings underneath that are the more common membranous wings. So I'm just giving you a little bit of some features here, nice chewing mouth parts. And that right there is how you pin an orthopteran. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more guidance for pinning your insects.